Hello everybody and welcome back. I am Mr. JP and today we're playing some more Out of War. And uh, Hotfix landed this morning. They're coming at 100 miles an hour. Uh, so a big thank you to the developer for his dedication. Big thank you to all my viewers out there who are watching. Um, if, if you like it, give me a like. If you don't like it, please say why so we can improve the content. Um, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate your subscription and it's going to come in handy later on because in the future there's going to be more game, there's going to be more information and life's an information battle people, the more information you can get. So uh, hopefully as the game develops there'll be some more informative videos. But today I'm addressing a question that has been going around on the Discord, it's been going around on the Steam and it's been asked about the game a few times. How do you dig down? Well the answer is the excavator. And it starts with hoppers. So, hoppers, yeah. I've dug a trench here down. You can see we're hitting some different coloured pay dirts and stuff, which is good. Uh, and you can see this is the 530 excavator. And uh, this is the dumper. Now, the excavators are working really nicely. I haven't filmed me digging that hole because it takes me a while. I'm not that good with excavators. My technique could best be described as cowboy. Um, However, I did get quite a neat hole this time, so I think I'm improving. Um, I'm reversing up this slope with the dumper because the dumpers still have a few little issues, as we're going to see in a couple of seconds, but they do work. They save me double shifting this pile um, after excavating it with a loader. Um, so I, I, I think they're an achievable way of moving a fair amount of material. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to use them anywhere where it's going to be tidy. You can see where I've been emptying with the excavator in the background. There's a few lumps and bumps where the uh, dumper was parked. And that's because when you spill, you, the dumper is prone to the popcorning effect. And you can see as you go to tip, the balls sort of start going through the load bed and bouncing around and the physics gets a bit hectic. Personally, I'm down with having fill planes on the dumpers to improve their mechanics and to improve performance of the game. Uh, if it means we can have like big 100 ton dumpers as well, that would be awesome. And currently some of the load sticks up in the bed so I tend to just gently drop the back wheels off of here and press the parking brake and there you go you can see they all fall off uh, a little bit of juggle on the bed can help as well but this material is really not worth that much so I, I'm not worried if some of it hangs up so park that there because for what we're about to do effectively some people have been asking how to do this so I'm going to quickly demonstrate it without actually doing it but when you want a vehicle back in your inventory, you just look at it, press the empty inventory slot number that corresponds to the slot, so I want it in slot 1, which is the highlighted slot at the beginning, it's empty, press 1 whilst looking at the vehicle, confirm that you want it in the inventory, and it's back in the bar. And something other people have asked about is selling vehicles. I believe that in this top bar, just click the sell item, drop it in, and you can click sell and you'll get the money back for it which I, I'm not going to do. I want to keep my dumper. Not that it matters with like 279 mil. So, having dug this out, we now sort of got this hole, which isn't very useful. But, with the new recycling tool, you can recycle everything you've built with, which is kind of handy. So, we'll just uh, erase this hopper quickly, being careful not to click on any of the equipment in the background, because the range on this... Uh, demo mode can be pretty hairy. <laughs> Sorry, just uh, getting rid of those bits up at the top of the row hanging, because uh, I think I might want to cut them out in a minute. So yeah, you're probably wondering why I put those blocks on the sides of my hoppers. What on earth was that connected to? Yeah, that, okay, that's, that's, that's going to make life a bit of fun. The hopper has backfilled in and I can no longer see the end of the conveyor. So, uh, da, 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 I need another one of these. Buildings, production, in here is all your conveyors and everything. Uh, I want a conveyor up, even though I'm going down. So I've got my conveyor up, but I can't see the end of the conveyor I want to join it on, which is kind of annoying. So, I'm going to actually look at the bit of the conveyor I can see, and if I zoom out a sec, you can see it's highlighted down below. So you just click whilst looking at pretty much any part of the end of the conveyor, and it will click another one on for you. And because I hopefully, yeah, I did just undercut enough. Excellent. The hole is deep enough. We know. That's good. So in my inventory, all the bits I recycled are now in here, 
and uh, if you hold down shift you can split piles uh, which is kind of handy and um, we now have autosave warnings by the way so if uh, you like myself get a bit nervous about when the autosave comes up and things start to and they occasionally freeze a little um, it's good so I'm just going to quickly show you why I have these steel blocks in place around my hoppers so uh, let's get some bits in here the steel blocks attach really nicely to the side of the hoppers you just look at the middle of the hopper and click and they go in and this new building system is good people uh, I, I don't understand uh, how people are having such a struggle with it um, I'm guessing they never played Space Engineers, Seven Days to Die, uh, or a few other voxel-based building games. So to rotate a component that's not lining up the way you want it to, you just hold down the left mouse button. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> These are all lining up how I want it to. Typical. When you want to demonstrate something, won't happen. Uh, <laughs> um, so they, they've all gone in quite nicely, but over here, I don't know if I can even start the process, but yeah. Because of the new way that blocks join together, I can start it. That's not going to help me out though. I need to be over here. The angle and the bit of the block that you are looking at are very important because they're, they've got like highlighted zones as it were. There we go, that's the angle I want. And by looking at the angled roof piece that I've put in, I, I can pretty much put them in just off a wafer of being able to see the block. You can see I can only see the merest wafer of the one I just put in and there, whack, next one's in, which is lovely. Now I'm just going to uh, clear up the Arvik. Oh, this is so fast and easy. Because um, I don't need it anymore. And at the ends here, uh, I like to put these nice little end panels in because uh, I think it looks neater and it obviously clakes up all the little balls and stops them falling down but they won't attach to the side of roof blocks or to the tops of roof blocks but if you look down at the edge of those blocks I put in earlier you can see it highlights on the top edge of the block or on the side so the bit you look at is quite important but you can see it underneath the angle and then you click look at the edge of that one click click so easy like I, I, I it is very different to the original uh, I'll give you that but Oh my word, it is easy. However, I don't think I can get any M1s in at the moment. I'm going to have to come in with an excavator or something. Just have a quick dig if I want any end tiles in there. Now what you can do in this situation, of course, is something a little bit cheeky. Which, if I do this, uh, can I see that? See it that way. No, it won't let me rotate like that. Mm. Is that a hole? <laughs> if that's a hole, then I'm... Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'm on a winner. There was a hole there that I could just about see that through. So now I've got one in position. Click. Click. Insta hopper. <laughs> um, I love it. This is great. It's brilliant. And then on the top of the wall blocks, you could just put the floor blocks by looking at the edge just like the others. Click. 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 Yeah, made a bit of a mistake there, no worries. Get the recycle tool out, click. Oh, so satisfying. Um, uh, you, you, I've waited a couple of months for these updates. I'm loving this, by the way, just in case you can't tell. Um, so yeah, none of this is necessary anymore. So you can fast, because the recycle tool doesn't leave the wreckage around that the demolish tool used to. You can now actually fast recycle components fairly well. If you can get in line with them, you can just click, 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 click. So getting rid of massive floors doesn't take long. Getting rid of entire bases doesn't take long. And if you've got something in the background that you didn't, that you wanted, uh, it's gone with this mode. It, it can be pretty quick and say bye bye. So. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at the build of this hopper and thinking that I might want... Yeah, so you still can't build those on top of those. Which, uh, never mind. I might want some more wall in here, I think, just to stop any overspills. And to show me where the hopper actually is on that side. Because I know what I'm like. 
I tend to fly at hoppers with vehicles and things get crazy. So, got myself a nice new hopper. Got myself a nice new chunk of open mine. We need to go downwards. So, to facilitate this, I'm just going to tidy up my inventory again. Oh yeah, I didn't clear out my machines after my last mining session. Um, just before we dive in here with the bulldozer, just go, go do that. We'll demonstrate how we do this. So these are the storage modules, and these are the sorting drums. You connect a hopper via the conveyors to a sorting drum, and out of the top of the sorting drum will come your valuable stuff like your lithium, your platinum, magnetite, borzite. Uh, I presume coal ends up up here, but I need to put some through it to find out. So, um, And in the other one, the bottom option, which is... Obviously, it's a rotating drum sorter, so dust comes out the bottom and rocky stuff comes out the top that doesn't go through the holes. So in this one, in the bottom exit, we have some pay dirt, we have some dirt. I, I was expecting big numbers of pay dirt and dirt out of there because I pretty much ripped out this corner of the mine straight out into that hopper. It got messy. You can tell. Things are a bit bumpy lumpy over there. Haven't actually taken in the uh, roller yet to smooth it out because I'm going in with a dozer and it's going to make a mess. They are messy creatures. Ah, uh, hey, here we go. We've got a bit more lithium here. Oh, yeah. Got a bit of magnetite. Got a bit of borzite. It's a better demo. And we've got some dirt. And some more pay dirt. So, selling ores is exactly the same as selling vehicles. Open the inventory. Open the cell window. This can be done straight from the storage modules or from your inventory. Load it all up in here. And sell. And you can see the amounts aren't much for those ones, but that load of lithium was worth 189,000. So that was kind of handy, and that was just from 10 minutes digging sort of before the video. Uh, it doesn't take long to make profit once you're into the rich stuff. So I'm actually going to move this loader a little first. Because we, we want to go downwards, and we're going to need a little bit of space for this. So <coughs> pretty much about opening up some room uh, and and getting the space we need to do the job. I'm just going to uh, gently shove some of this into the hopper because I love it. Just take it and push it gently into the hopper. And then something that is a nice trick about the uh, loaders is this top bar on the bucket. You can see it just cuts with the bucket full forward. You can just lower it into a hopper and start cutting the edge away like that. Whoops, I fell into the hopper. But don't worry if it it just builds back up. <laughs> it's great. Um, really liking this. Uh, the suspension and uh, handling on the loaders is vastly improved over two days ago when things were a little bit slippery and on ice, which was kind of awkward, slowing everything down. Uh, this is so much quicker, you can just whop straight into the hopper. Uh, clear a bit off of that edge as well. You can just gently scrape and get quite a lot of material into a sunken hopper. And that's why I sink my hoppers in. So as you can see, going downwards I now have a lower hopper. Uh, there is a big spike of... This is why it's a good idea to stay tidy, those big spikes and everything. Every time you lump over them, it's costing you time when you turn around to your hopper people. Um, Mining is all about cycles per, per, per minute. How many times you can get the machine into the wall and over the dumper or over the hopper. That is what mining quickly is about. That is what mining efficiency is about. Uh, and it's the same in any machine processing situation. I used to work in uh, injection molding and, and there it's all about cycles per minute or cycles per second depending on the speed of the injection molder that you're working with. Um, good fun. Martin plastic everywhere. Sometimes things that were a bit more dangerous than martin plastic. It's kind of fun too. Um, if a little more stressful. So yeah, obviously that, that, this is how you use a hopper with a loader. Uh, I don't want to leave this down here. What am I doing? What am I thinking? Don't park in the middle of where you're going to work. <laughs> park it up over here, because that's where it's going to next be used. And I can't get out of the vehicle. There we go. Just wiggle the steering a little. Let me jump out. So, quite a lot of the problems you're having getting out of vehicles is the surface your vehicle is sitting on. Um, 
I have noticed this. It's been here in since the start of the game, and it's purely a matter of, I think, having the clearance to generate a new character as you're spawned out the vehicle, as it were. Um, but I'm not a software guy. Like, uh, I'm not very good with software. Um, it took me 15 minutes to learn, well, relearn, because it's 20 years since I've done any of this kind of thing. Uh, how to zip a file? <laughs> so, so I'm not some kind of internet god. Uh, I, I don't do social media. Uh, I'm, I'm terrible at all of this, really. Uh, I started making videos about three months ago, and out of all came out. A friend of mine said, "Make some videos about it. Show me." So I bought him a copy of the game and showed him, and he got into it, uh, which was kind of cool. Um, but he's currently a bit distracted with Armor Three, which is a uh, Left me a little bit lonely with my uh, out of war hobby, but he said, "God, you're on it," because he's seen the amount I'm playing. So uh, yeah, it's good fun. Hopefully, we'll be uh, seeing that mate in some of my other videos um, in multiplayer gaming at some point in the future, which would be kind of cool. Um, I don't get out much, so socialising whilst gaming is probably where it's at from now on. And you can just bulldoze stuff into these hoppers all day. By the way. <laughs> As Mr. JB slowly gets uh, suddenly gets into something crazy, so yeah, we want to start sort of a new step down o over here somewhere for the loader to go in and cut on and turn around and get into this hopper. So we're going to need some of this material gone. So I'm just going to take it from the top because that's easier and build sort of a new ramp in in some ways just with this material because it's in the way. That's all this is about. This is overburden removal. The the definition of um, I'm just going to tip it into that hole. I wanted to see whether those lift conveyors pick up stuff. It looks like the conveyors don't pick up material at least oh no they do. Unless that one rolled down all the way to the hopper. Interesting. So I'm going to come back here again. I'm not sure if that's a floor tile or rich stuff in that bit of the hill. Uh, once you've got a certain amount on the blade, just raise the blade and run forward, which is what I did then. You can see how it sort of starts levelling you out. That's how you end a slope. So when you get down to the height you want, bulldozing downhill like this, just lift your blade and you'll start to form a nice flat area. Uh, a bit of a plateau in this direction, as it were. Uh, and what I'm doing is just slowly sliding the material off of this slope towards the hopper. And this is how I start all of this. It's a slow process. Don't think out of all is a fast game, people. It's not. Look, look at its history. Um, uh, where it's come from, where it's going. Um, any sim game requires a certain amount of dedication. And uh, as I found out from a conversation last night, I actually checked my Steam times for hours in games, which is something I tend not to do. Mainly for the reason of what happened last night. I got scared. I started adding up hours on like two or three games and got to 11,000 hours. Uh, and I think that was in uh, a game called Space Engineers and a game called Seven Days to Die, which are both like out of awe in some ways, voxel games that I believe Space Engineers uses a different engine. Um, but either way, they're sort of all about mining. Um, yeah, so I've got five and a half thousand hours in both of those games. <laughs> um, which is an insane amount of hours. Um, but yeah, it does mean that um, out of all was kind of necessary to distract me from what I was doing there. <laughs> but uh, Space Engineers will be getting another visit because they're doing uh, an update soon for AI. And uh, that, that came up in the conversation I had last night as well about how AI is going to be the new thing and uh, probably something to get into. So uh, I'll probably be doing a video about AI controlled pirate ships or something at some point. Um, but i got to learn how to use that first. And to learn how to use that, I'm going to have to take a break from out of war, which is not going to happen for a while. It's uh, I find this bulldozing malarkey and opening up these seams and uh, running a new game through its pace is incredibly enjoyable. And uh, Space Engineers is a much bigger game. There's a, it's already had the beta test for these uh, updates and stuff, and there's plenty of people who are already on it, like Gromit. Uh, and I, I personally think this one has more room to grow in it, if that makes sense. There's this space for uh, a lot of creativity in Out of All. Its, it's potential is enormous. 
Um, uh, <laughs> um, there's a mod I want for it. I do love this auto save warning. I'm just going to stop and see what it does. Interesting, it just fades out. I wonder what happens if I keep on moving when it does that. Hmm. So yeah, I tried to build a ramp down, but it, it appears that I'm not getting very deep or going too deep, so I'm not too worried about this material, so we're, we're going to go in deep and uh, spread it around a bit. Get some pace in. Uh, I, th I think a lot of the trick with going downhill is just not to worry about wastage. Like, that cut in there deleted a lot of dirt. But I don't care. Because what's under there is pay dirt. <laughs> so yeah. Um, let's just uh, do something similar down here. Currently pay dirt is not much use. We've got no way of processing it. That's something that's going to come. Uh, for sure. Um, it was in the old game after all. Now I'm hitting the rich stuff with the scraper down there. Excellent. Not too worried if I go a little below the hopper, the loader can handle it and it's, like, it's not it's not for using the dumper, so it's not a big deal. I don't want to carve more material into the hole. I'm trying to dig a hole and not fill it back. I saw someone backfilling holes the other day and landscaping a seam. I was like, what? Hang on. Landscaping a seam? You want the ability to plant grass? That's like the antithesis of the thinking of Out of War. <laughs> the, whole, the whole aim of this game is to get down to bedrock and, and, and kind of start mining that and crushing it. That's where the profit's at. That's where the gold and all the nice stuff's meant to be. Uh, I don't know. I haven't actually seen bedrock in this version yet, so um, I need to get down there. That's what all of this madness is about. Right, we've got an exit route. Excellent. So yeah, I've, I've, I've spread an awful lot of material around there. What a mess. Let's clear some of this up. So yeah, I just dropped my blade back a bit to sort of a midway for carrying, so I don't want to dig in too far, he says immediately carving a mountain out of the ground. Okay. Still, getting plenty of rich stuff into the hopper, so uh, maybe I won't worry so much about that mountain I just carved out of the ground. Let's yeah. really tidy this up. Sorry if I keep going quiet, by the way. I, um, I find this bulldozing malarkey in the whole game very therapeutic to play. Um, when the uh, loader had its little handling problem a couple of days ago, it turned into pure frustration. 24 hours, but uh, that's that's development gaming, um, and to be honest, you haven't felt frustration until you spent half an hour moving a train in railroads online, only to have it derail for no reason on a flat bit of right line. Um, that game needs help, <laughs> which is why I play it still. But uh, yeah, it nah. Uh, Christian from Out of War has just done a much better developer than uh, the developer of uh, railroads, but it's still a nice game. The interesting thing about it is it uses the same engine as Out of War, but the, uh, the the map in it has been developed in such a way that it's very fixed. You can't tunnel in it, which I find quite interesting. I need to learn more about these game engines and how they work and how they're set up, that's for sure, if I'm going to talk about them. But it's fascinating. It's a whole new world for me, really. whole new world. What will also be fascinating is how much of this bulldoze stuff is actually making it to profit-wise, because previously when I've done this I've been very like, surprised at the lack of stuff that I'd actually pushed in. Um, but that was a few versions ago. I haven't tried it for a while, so see what happens here. Oh, 
Well, that's a nice dozer blade for. Look at that guy. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, dozers are messier. All I did was a few quick little runs down that slope, and it's taken us about like five, ten minutes to clean up. Um, but I'm getting a lot of material in this hopper, so that's kind of handy. It's not very apparent what I'm probably doing here, so to, to explain what I'm doing, on the left hand side of the dozer you can see a sort of step starting to form where I'm making these runs in. That's where I'm going to start cutting the loader, and I'm actually going to start cutting in the direction I don't want to go, which is away from the mine, in the direction the dozer is sort of currently facing towards that machinery. And I'm just going to gently get rid of this big slope and bring it down so that I've got a, a way of getting roller down here and other vehicles. You don't really need it with the airdrops. Um, what I'm doing is in some ways a little bit pointless. Uh, at the same time, it gets this brown top dressing, as it were, out the way somewhere else. And it gives the loader something to start on and create a flat lower area to work on. So that's what this is sort of also about. So this is this groundwork and prep. You can't just dig a giant hole. You, you, you've got to work at it a little. Um, you can just dig a giant hole, of course. You can just you know pack out the nuke and go for it. But it's just not kind of my way um, due to some stuff in my history. Uh, I don't like contaminating ground with fallout, okay? Um, <laughs> just just something something about being an 80s kid and living in Europe at the time, you know what I mean? Um, got a bit of a problem with that. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. I, I prefer a non-explosive option out of all, it's more profitable, there's a few things. And currently, all I'm doing with the dozer now is starting to destroy profitable stuff, so... Um, you know, Probably time to stop messing around with that now we've got a bit of a step for me. Backfill this hole a little bit so it's a bit smoother. There we go. I'm just going to start heaping gently in this direction a little. Just working that blade in, lifting it, and just shunting the stuff across a little, just to get rid of this sort of step back here. Rather than trying to cut that step off, I'm just going to fill it in. <laughs> just a little bit deep there in front of the hopper. I don't want it that deep at the moment. Um, because I need a, a smooth ramp down for the loader and that's a step and that's no good to me. Sometimes it's a good idea just to start again with a dozer, you've got some balls in the way, let them reform, then go in. Like so. I'll just part the stuff out of the way over here. Uh, in fact, I think I'm done with it. <laughs> so messy, good for clearing ground, good for deleting ground, not good in the rich stuff. Get rid of the orange smoke as well, because otherwise I'm going to feel like I'm in a Vietnam movie. So 
So yeah, digging downwards with loaders was the question that started this video half an hour ago. I'm sorry about that. Um, the trick to digging downwards with loaders is once again kind of not being worried about what you delete. You can skim quite well with them, which is what I'm just trying to do here. A little bit of downwards tilt. Don't lift the front wheels off the ground. You can just skim material out all day towards a hopper like that. And it'll earn you a certain amount for sure. Definitely. Um, may as well start as we mean to go on, go over near the edge. So, over here, you can see my loaders all bouncing around and stuff, and I'm doing this in this order for a reason, really, to generate, like, uh, to demonstrate what's going on. But I'm just going in at the bottom of that cliff, turning the bucket upwards now, and getting reasonably full just with that manoeuvre. Previously, there, there was sometimes a bit of a struggle to get a full bucket, so... Uh, the last couple of uh, versions haven't had that struggle, but early on we were having a bit of a giggle sometimes. Just went in behind there. Got my teeth stuck. Yeah, it's easier. Realistically, the side I'm cleaning is easier to clean from the other side. But, um, never mind. Uh, I'm not too worried about any uh, spillage or anything at this stage because I've got 200 million. I think I can buy every machine in the list, so... Alright. Now, we are lumping and bumping over everywhere, and you know what I was saying about keeping your front wheels on the deck. It's inherently necessary, but uh, it means we can be a bit messy. doesn't matter. Place is a mess anyway, so if I drop a few bits, it's probably going to actually make the place smoother. <laughs> And that's what I mean about cleaning the uh, hoppers easier from the other side. You saw how easy it was just to clear that other side there. And so I'm just going along where the dozer went, like as you can see, and just gently knocking out a few bits and pieces. People have said dozers are for building ramps down, and I'll be honest, that, yeah, you can build a very big ramp down very quickly, like I did over there. Um, literally in three or four swipes I was down the depth of the dozer on a 45 degree angle towards my mine. So starting at the top seems to work quite well with them. Um, a useful trait of the loader is the skim up the wall like that, all the way up. And it leaves you a nice clean wall surface, gives you a nice full bucket full as well. Um, and you want to be cutting out underground the full height of a large loader. Uh, so that when you drive around in the tunnels with the bucket up, you don't skim anything out the ceiling and make your tunnels slowly get narrower and narrower as the floor fills in, uh, or slowly rise up out the ground, which can happen too. Um, as the roof's cut away and you slowly get higher on the floor, eventually you're going to sort of stick out the ground, if that makes sense, if that continues. Long term. Uh, it's a long term problem. But yeah, for cutting up a slope and cutting a ramp uphill, the load is actually pretty good for it, as you can see where I'm skimming at the moment. Um, depending on the bucket angle you skim upwards with as you push forward depends on the angle of the slope you get. So if you've got your bucket level and you push forward, you're going to produce a fairly level slope in line with the wheels. So on this rough ground I'll probably go downhill. Um, but if I angle the bucket upwards you can see it just slowly as it comes up starts to cut an uphill slope. Like that which is nice and smooth and you know the bits leaking off back for it a little it's kind of handy so yeah to go down requires a little bit of effort yeah but you start a little bit further back from where you want to go down like this so we want to go down over here so angle your bucket down about that so what 30 degrees or 35 as someone's so keen to have as a slope block. Are you crazy? 22 and a half is half of 45. Therefore in a square environment 22 and a half is the slope you want not 35 but hey I'm not a mathematician I just fit carpets for a living. Well I used to. But yeah the angle of the bucket controls the direction you dig and once your bucket's full you aren't going to be able to push it into the ground any further. You know? It's like uh, if you've got a uh, a tin can that's empty you can push it into the ground as long as there's a hole in the top to let the air out but once that tin can is full of soil 
you can't push it into the ground. It's solid. It's suddenly a three inch diameter instead of that thin edge. So um, yeah, once the buckets or the blades are full, you, you, you essentially have got to stop pushing forward, scoop, and come back out. Or you'll just start deleting dirt. Now if deleting dirt is what you want to do, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so for instance, so th there is a way with the loader of deleting dirt. You just leave the blade hanging forward like this and drive into a slope. Boof, 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 boof. You, 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 you can get through somewhere quite quickly like that. Because you leave the bucket in the hole and the voxels won't reform where the bucket is. So it just sort of deletes the dirt that's there and then you drive forward a bit more and yeah, you can slowly carve like a trench through and nearly anything that way. So th there's ways and means of getting through places quicker. I'm just a bit of a purist about digging holes and processing what comes out. It's kind of the point. Uh, you, other games I have inventories full of just like waste stone and stuff like in Minecraft. Um, people are like, what have you got all that for? And then you do a big build project and they're like, oh, that's why you kept that lot. <laughs> You can see there as I raised it, there wasn't any voxels forming. There was none of the balls. And then I stopped digging for a sec, let all the balls land and reform, and all of a sudden we've got a full bucket. It's uh, I'm sure the game can only support so many of these physics calculations for these balls, which is why the dump is having a few problems, because there's so many in it. Um, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. It might be a separate lists thing. There can only be so many active floating in the world. Uh, I will learn about these things and I will beat it. I will improve games. I will be the best again. Well, not the best. That's a bit egotistical. But the best I can be, perhaps. That's probably the better way of doing it. Because I don't like being top of the pack to be honest always feels a bit nervous <laughs> you have to start setting examples and stuff and you end up getting in trouble when other people do things when you're the leader and you've actually got the responsibility I don't know I wanted the army when I was young as an officer but in retrospect having seen what it was about from another side yeah perhaps I was best off out of it you can see we're slowly getting down here and it is a slow game you, you're not going to go downhill in a hurry unless you start deleting huge quantities of voxels which in the early game phase if you're still playing early game and playing against the bank it's not what you want to be doing <laughs> I'm going to get in here grab me another scoop ball. like that as you can see we're starting to go downhill a bit there and in, into the hole so Grabbing hold of voxels is it, it's going to be a bit more of a problem. So, uh, just start from a bit further back and uh, reduce the slope. So you just cut the top off, as it were. And that, this is what it's about. It's about experimenting with the machines. It's about learning what you're doing. Uh, and it's about taking the time. I, I see so much impatience um, in gaming. Just, just Just a general thing. This isn't a gripe at anything specific. Um, people saying, oh my god, it doesn't work, and they haven't actually done the work to learn how it works. Um, once you know how it works, you can start to uh, use it properly. And once you've got using it properly down, you can start to manipulate the rules of the environment you're in to suit what you're trying to do. Um, once you know the rules, you can bend them. Think about, uh, if you haven't watched it, watch The Matrix, and just remember there is no spoon, okay? Uh, once you get what that's talking about, and and it's it's not about bending spoons, by the way, um, you will find that your mind becomes more. Fle it's about mind flexibility, basically. Um, and I see it. I guess I see uh, evidence of a, a lot of very inflexible minds. Um, we see it when new updates to deck games come out. We've seen it with Out of War. Uh, I've, I've seen it in uh, other games where they've changed how a building system works or a game mechanic that's been in the game a long time and people really don't like change it's hilarious uh, they're, they're, they're 
some of the things you see in people writing and it's just like have you actually read your comment before you hit return uh, even at all <laughs> um, so yeah it does make me giggle a bit um, but I, as I get older I, maybe my viewpoint gets calmer I don't know <laughs> I do know that I look at the nightlife these days and think man did I used to do that I'm sure it wasn't that hectic when I was doing it but I'm probably wrong it probably was I just don't remember <laughs> Bit, bit like a hurricane, it looks bad from the outside, but when you're in it, it actually wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, a, a, a few minutes work here is slowly making an impression on this piece of ground. I'm, I'm gently skimming in with the blade slightly downhill, tilting it backwards as I get level into the hole, and then lifting it, occasionally stopping like this one and giving it another lift. Oh yeah, we like that Colgate flavour, look at that. Look at that. And as you can see, that hole is starting to develop rather well. Now, uh, a little later on, as, as this hole comes towards the hopper, I'll start feeding the hopper from the end, and walking this step backwards until I've got a flat area about a block and a half to two blocks down from the hopper edge we see now, which hopefully this hole is. Otherwise, I'll be bulldozing material into back filler. Um, or cutting a lot more than I uh, anticipated with my next cut. But yeah, the material coming out of this groove that I thought was dirt is actually turning out to be rather rich. I think the seams spread out as they go downhill a little now. But uh, I noticed in the um, NMC Discord there is uh, now a future plan being posted by the dev that involves a geology update, and I'm looking forward to that one. I want to see long, thin coal seams that we have to dig down to and suddenly find layers and stuff. Uh, a bit more like the real deal. Um, yeah, that's going to be a good day. Uh, we've got drills for finding seams and someone was suggesting new machinery in, in the Discord. I don't think new machinery in the fact more drilling machinery is the way to go. I mean, I know drilling, a lot of people like drilling exploration and oil stuff. Uh, but something that might be better would be like you know an overview map of the area that uh, updates and shows where you've edited and stuff um, that'd be kind of handy new processing gear comes before new vehicles now we need something for separating pay dirt and uh, getting rich stuff out i need to get down to bedrock and check that these crushers actually work um, so yeah there's a few bits that we need to do before new vehicles like that but with that map comes the ability to perhaps deploy um, some kind of seismic rig to show the locations but not what's in a seam. Uh, and uh, I, I thought about this because the snow covered map I, I'm, I haven't really played but I'm guessing that it's a bit harder to find the seams under all that snow uh, and in that situation you might want a seismic scanner. <laughs> For doing the seismology. Uh, it's a way to go. I've got a friend who worked for a company who did that kind of thing and I wanted to uh, as an electronics engineer. Seismology and sonar are both fields that you, you sort of look at. <coughs> and um, yeah, he, he was fascinated by it all. Really likes it. Loves this solar stuff and volcanology which is interesting. So yeah, I'm, as I say, the, the future of this game is huge. Absolutely huge. It, it's currently being developed by a single dev, but that is never going to last. Never going to last. No matter how good a games writer, developer, software programmer is, um, there will always come a point where a game this big, with this much potential, is going to is going to expand. It's going to. Like I just oh, thinking about this game expanding and becoming more developed. It's like thinking about a massive banquet. And you've got to understand, I can't eat vegetables, I can't eat a chemical group called salicylates, uh, and that includes inhaling perfumes, would you believe? Um, something like a sliced open tomato, or um, any fumes that come off of sliced open vegetables are lethal. So the idea of eating some massive banquet to me is huge, because I these days can't eat any of it, but I remember eating it. Uh, I could eat it, it's just I turn into a raging angry animal. Um, 
who you know it affects your brain neurology and it causes depression it causes ibs and it causes chronic fatigue syndrome which is interesting because in the uk those are the things we're all suffering from and for years they've been telling us to eat five a day and i think everyone's just overdosing on veg everybody take a couple of days off veg a week and eat some meat i mean jesus one generation can't even eat meat without crying um but we are omnivores people um, an entire vegetable diet is not going to help you out unless you're genetically suited for it and um, it turns out that there is a genetic template that is suitable for a meat diet and it's the salicylate intolerant side of things um, uh, it's an interesting field it's an interesting field but yeah denial of the animal that you are will only lead to complications uh, and I know what I am <laughs> But uh, so digging the hole anyway. Yeah, I'm thinking about food. It's probably because lunchtime I'm getting hungry. End up getting hangry. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, we're starting to get on the downhill here, and uh, it, it is actually making getting into these faces awkward. So what you do is you dig your way forward as you level out, and you can see what's happening. The muck that's falling off of my blade as I go in there is falling in the hole, and it's actually starting to level things out a little bit which is kind of handy so I mean I need to go further with that a little just for demonstration purposes I need to take a couple more cuts but you can see how awkward the um, uneven ground is making working with the loader so if you're working against the steep slope it might be best to build yourself a temporary floor to work on like that one was built into the slope but it's now above the hole uh, and that will give you a level surface to go in with the loader uh, likewise, if you dug a deep hole and you want to level out the bottom, like without using GPS or getting all technical, um, you can just build a couple of floor panels in the bottom of the hole, and that will give you a level surface. So I'll, I'll quickly demonstrate how to do that now, because this is an interesting one that's a, a new fe feature of the game. Press Q, get me a floor panel. Okay. Right, so floor panels, as you can see, can be placed in the green anywhere, but they go red. If you want to place something in air, hold down tab and it will go green and you can just place it and start a floor so you can, you can place it anywhere whilst holding down tab which I actually think is kind of awesome because it means you can place um, roof tiles half off or there's a few different ways you can use that um, I haven't explored all of it but we're just going to quickly jump into the roller because the roller or compactor is actually an essential essential tool at the moment you need it like um, yeah, the setup you need this classic. Uh, I love yeah, punk. You can't beat it. Punk music. You cannot beat it when you're in a mood. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bring the, the compactor down here, and that's why I left that bit of ramp there, just so that I could get down here without actually nose diving. Because once the front end of the compactor is wedged against something and it's downhill, getting out of it can be awkward. Very awkward. So yeah, what I'm going to do here is just quickly run about and I mean, someone upgraded the uh, roller's engine the other day which was kind of handy, whoever it is, they need a raise. Um, I'm just going to go into the hole where I was digging and uh, demonstrate how this works. Uh, the front rolls do a little bit of rolling and then there's like a line at the back, near the back wheels that can actually be used as well when you're reversing. As you just saw from the way that it sort of started disappearing into the slope, the back of the roller may not be necessarily generated as part of the model, I don't know. It doesn't delete voxels, but yeah, you can get quite a bit of the way in backwards. It's kind of handy. Uh, and around these hoppers and stuff, because it builds up and destroys ground with that um, compressor on the front, the compactor, um, it can be very useful, because it starts deleting the dirt, as you saw in that corner, and gives you a nice clean finish to your floors if there's dirt sticking through it. A few different ways this can be used. <laughs> um, but you have to be a bit delicate with it because you can't turn the effect on and off, which is why I keep calling this a roller. Um, a roller is a fixed device of weight which flattens terrain, right? Like this one is. However, a compactor to me has uh, an engine or system fitted it that causes the roller to vibrate up and down or, or to shake they make a funny brrrr noise 
uh, and that's a compactor because it's physically compacting the ground below it. If you just park it with that vibration thing on, it will slowly sink in. Um, so if we could get a roller that has got an on-off switch that allows you to turn the compaction off and on, then it will be a compactor. Currently it's a roller. so but It's very nice and it, it does leave a very smooth finish and for a long time we were hand smoothing. I actually destroyed a mouse at the end of last year um, playing this game at the start because you had to click to smooth and it was a nightmare. <laughs> so yeah, out of all owes me a new mouse. <laughs> uh, which I do already have and I actually haven't plugged it in yet I'm still using the one that I bought back then because I'm trying to kill it it's horrible, absolutely horrible why are mice so narrow? Uh, I'm going to be honest, I know that I'm a massive bloke I'm like 6 foot 6 I don't weigh a lot um, mainly because I like my knees intact um, uh, I've got friends who are 18 to 24 stone in my height and um, their knees and spines have suffered for it. My spine's not so good, but that's working at low benches designed for all the midgets. No offence, guys, but working something that's high, too high for you is easier than working on something too low for you. You guys can get a footstool. I can't just jack the entire freaking counter up, okay? And I can't crouch, and I can't sit down. Um, and now I can't even bend forward thanks to the NHS and lean forward to work at a desk, so yeah. You guys are going to all have to adapt for me now. I've done 20 years working in the industry at low desks. It's over. Um, <laughs> no more big guy being nice to the short guys. Like, you guys are going to have to deal with your inadequacies the same way as I have to deal with it. Like, all of these nice old buildings that people like building pubs and trendy wine bars in, they're absolutely lethal. Like, my local pub, I am actually wearing my airsoft helmet in. <laughs> because the beams are so low that any time I actually have an alcoholic drink, or any drink in there, I end up with concussion, dodging someone who's a lot shorter than me, and smack a beam. Um, so yeah, I don't go out anymore, it's just not worth it. It makes me angry. <laughs> That's how you end up with five and a half thousand hours in a game that really has nothing in it and there's a sandbox. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely need to get out more on that school. Never know, never know, it might happen this year. It needs to get sunny first. I live in the UK and it's done nothing but rain for about three weeks. Um, there were a couple of sunny days, but yeah. until spring hits properly, out of oars where it's at. And it's one of the reasons why I've got the weather and the day-night cycle turned off. This is my daylight. <laughs> it's my vitamin D. It's my sunlight. So yeah, um, digging into the ground takes time. You will find yourself running around with a roller and um, going back in like this between the two vehicles. But now things are starting to go downhill a little. Not 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 with what I'm doing, but, but with the actual hull. So we change direction on it. And uh, start going in like this. And this will allow a bit more turnaround space for the loader. Because that's what we're doing. We're opening a space for the loader to work in this direction that I'm facing now. And for that you need about two loaders lengths. So I need to go further into that wall and I need to go further downhill then I can turn around and start digging the loader and just 90 degree dig and dump at very high speed like what I can do here um, you can with a look as long as you've built your hopper fairly close you can just go in grab a big bucket full a reasonable big bucket full turn back out and dump and you can do this as I say at a, a fairly high speed um, for material turnaround once you're in practice uh, and as long as you don't mind getting a bit messy like that which I don't at the moment, I don't mind a smooth route in so yeah like if you're willing to constantly rebuild your equipment that's what I meant about you can delete ground fairly quickly if you want to just tip that bucket forward and wham. But as long as the front wheels are on the deck, digging's fine. As soon as you lift them, you've got a problem. But yeah, you can just dig like this all day long at high speed into a hopper. And if I was going in the other direction away, 
as I've extended that hopper, you can just extend it with a straight conveyor and go straight across the map, level with the hopper, bang, 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 and cut yourself out of trench continuously for as long as you like. Um, going to be honest, the machine's capable of about 10 kilometers an hour, so it, it, it would take you, uh, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes to drive until you, as far as I'm aware, I don't even know if there's an edge to the map or whether it starts to spontaneously generate, but uh, I think you could drive drive in a straight line at full throttle for 15 minutes and um, not hit any kind of um, software edge, shall we say. Um, that's big enough for me when uh, the map's as deep as it is wide. There's ki literally kilometres of material below us that is worth money. Like, once you get into a seam, you don't really have to move. Some of going down in this game is just dedication, because your your mind will slowly get lower, even if you just skim it all the time. It will just slowly reduce in height uh, until you 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 will end up deep. It will happen. Just realised all the equipment could be airdropped in. Who needs to ramp here? I will build a ramp in here, but I'm going to get through all the rich stuff until I'm hitting just dirt at this height, and then I'm going to bulldoze the rest of it out into the valley. It's a way forward, I think. Yeah, we'll also get rid of a load of this dirt out of here. I don't like the brown surface dirt, I want it gone. I want a nice clean line. Is that wrong? I don't know. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> so I've been messing with this for an hour. You can expect if you're going down using loaders for it to take a few minutes. It's not a quick the game because the loader's only got a certain size bucket, and that is about it. After that, it's leaking dirt. So if you're in rich stuff like I am at the moment, it's going to take you a little while. It's going to take you a little while. If it's just the leaking surface dirt. That's another matter. And there will be another video of just clearing overbird in at a new site at some point when I open this mine up in that direction. Um, because the top of that hill is basically one giant coal seam. And uh, I want to mine some coal just for roleplay value. I might pile it up just to have a massive pile of coal sat in the corner. See if I can cash, crash the game by building a coal pile. Um, so I don't know what happened this morning, but before the hotfix, I, I managed to crash the game for the first time in a while with a UE crash, uh, and they've been kind of rare for me recently. Um, and it was this kind of high-speed digging, uh, and I'd only been machine working for six hours, and I've been working this machine for 36 now, and we haven't had a problem. So it was either one of those random interactions, because I was pushing material towards that conveyor and storage module in the background. Or, I had managed to move so much material that we built a list up, but uh, as I say, that, that was my first UE crash in a couple of days, which for a development game on the Unreal Engine is amazingly stable. Um, uh, I, I remember a time, that it, previous version of Outward War that's currently the main version will crash in 10 minutes of bulldozing. Um, I, I proved that again and again in my previous videos. So, realistically guys, in summary, going downhill is going to take you time. I'm doing it the long grindy method. Uh, you can get out of the explosives. I could go in with an excavator and just trench this out instead of using the loader and just pile it up in a heap and then use the loader to push it in a little bulldozer or something. But I, I, I like the finish that this gives me. Uh, it's very ropey around the, the walls as you can see by the walls of my mine and uh, it just feels very real. Um, and I do love the digging action on the loaders, it's, it's beautiful, utterly beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably coming up to the end of my recorder cache, so um, thank you very much everybody who's watching my videos, and if you've stuck with it for an hour, well done, because um, uh, I, I, I don't know, the doctors think I might have ADHD, they might be right, but an hour's worth of watching someone play out of all, I'm not sure I can do it, um, I can play it for that long. Um, 
it, it's uh, yeah very therapeutic I don't feel like I've been playing a game for an hour uh, so yeah uh, I'm, I'm guessing if a game is something you're meant to enjoy and lose yourself in this is this is doing very well for something that is essentially a digging simulator there is no game here there is no game mechanics yet there is no economy yet however these things are coming and I'm very excited for it very excited so uh, thank you to all my viewers and subscribers again everybody who's getting involved with the comments everyone getting involved in the discord which is kinda of quiet at the moment I will improve my behavior in there and start talking again um, but yeah it, it, it's been good I hope this uh, helps you out in how to dig a hole and uh, if I just jump out of my machine you can see we are definitely going downhill here uh, and I will just keep scraping down like that into that slope until I've got enough room and work back in the opposite direction. Simples. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me everybody. If you like the video, leave a like. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. There'll be plenty more information about the game coming out as there's more to talk about. And uh, yeah, I am really loving it. It's great fun. So, this was Out of Awe. I am Mr. JP. Thank you very much. I'll catch you later on. Look after yourselves everybody.